stage, my friend and mentor, Mr. Jamie Smart. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I've got a piece of paper. Because I wanted to read you guys something. But hi, I'm Jamie. And uh, th thanks, Fiona. And uh, the title of this talk is The Unexpected Secret to Being Yourself in Front of Any Audience. And see, it occurs to me, what, who, who put up their hand when they ask, who gets nervous about public speaking? Or is, is there anyone who's super afraid of public speaking? I used to be. I used to be absolutely terrified of it. And I didn't even know I was terrified of it until the first time I got on stage. And then my knees started knocking and all the color drained from my face. And it was really, it was really quite embarrassing. And, uh, and I couldn't talk. And it's so interesting because so I went on a public speaking course. And what they gave me was lots of things to remember to do and to think about. And they said, you've got to write your talk out. And then you've got to rehearse it five times and all that sort of stuff. And so I wanted to do a quick exercise with you guys. I want you just to stand up for a second. And I want you to imagine, OK, that you're about to give a talk. You're about to go on stage. And you've got 17 points to make. And you've got to remember all of them and get them right and interact with the audience in the perfect way and make sure your posture is correct and your breathing's right and your voice tone is all in the right place and everything like that. Now, so you've got about 50 million things to remember. Uh, I want you to just pretend that you're about to do that. Like, take the shape of whatever that's like. You literally step into it. What does that look like? How does it feel? Use words. Horrible, tense. OK, shake that off. Literally move your body. Shake it. Ah, make that sound. Ah. This bit's for my amusement. Just go, ah. OK, now I want you to imagine something different. See, here's the thing. You've all been talking pretty much since you were two or three or four years old. You've not only been talking, but you've been talking to people and noticing how they respond. You've been listening to people. You've been connecting with people. You've been shaping your interactions based on what you see going on. See, it turns out that communication and impact is the most natural thing in the world. Connection is the most natural thing in the world when there's nothing getting in the way. So here's what I want to invite you to do now is I just want you to imagine that you're about to give a talk and all you need to do is walk out there and open your mouth and exactly the right thing's going to come out. Now how does that feel different? Relieved. Relaxed. Relaxed. Confident. Confident. Lighter. Lighter. Excited. Excited. Beautiful. Thank you. Just take your seat. See, what I'm going to be suggesting, well, it's interesting. So, so I, I can, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, actually. So in 1998, I went on an NLP training course, about 100 people, and a guy at the front of the room who l pretty much just told stories and guided us into exercises for the rest of the day. And I thought, I want to be able to do that. That looks like a cool job. But I was very afraid of public speaking. So I quit my job a couple of weeks later, went for it, got a contract so I could retrain as an NLP trainer. And I did that, but even like two years down the road, still very afraid of public speaking. And what I learned was something very interesting. So cut, cut to the chase. I built a very successful NLP company called Salad. Got to the point where, who's read Four Hour Work Week? Or, or, OK, so enough people to, to ensure it's a legit book. I got to the point where I was going for my first mini retirement in 2008. So I was going for a three-month ski holiday at Whistler, one of the world's greatest ski resorts. And I'd been there for the first two weeks. No, probably about six weeks, actually. And I was bored out of my mind. And I felt off track and off purpose and like something was wrong. And it didn't make sense to me because according to the rules of my, uh, my industry, I should have white light shining out of all my orifices at this point. And so I, 
I thought, huh, there's something missing. So I went back to the drawing board. And I, I hired a coach, and his starting point was, well, your whole model for how you're, how you're living your life is back to front. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, well, it's based on a, a false assumption. And here's the thing. See, being yourself is so easy that a two-year-old can do it. A one-year-old can do it, right? So the issue isn't how do you be yourself. The issue is what gets in the way of you being yourself. So I was, uh, uh, the first year that I ran my Clarity coach training program, which used to be called Clarity Practitioner, that's what Fiona mentioned, it's the first weekend, so it's day two of the first weekend. And there's a woman in the second row called Donna who hasn't said anything in the whole day and a half we've been together. And she starts changing color and crying and wobbling. So I, I called a pause and, and asked her, you know, how's it going? And she said, well, it's really weird. I said, what? She said, well, it's like what you were saying went right through me and 30 years of negative limiting beliefs fell away. And I said, oh. Great. She said, see, I, I've been afraid of public speaking my whole life. I couldn't speak to a group of more than four or five people without being absolutely terrified. She said, and it feels like that's gone. So I said, well, let's find out. So we go back in the room, and she stands up. She starts talking to this group of about 35 people. And then six weeks later, she spoke to a meetup of 70 people. And then uh, a few months later, she does a, a online webinar called How to Speak to 100 People Like You're Speaking to One Person. And then a few months ago, she spoke at a conference in Germany called Promax to 350 creatives, which is her industry. So here's the interesting thing. In that time, she didn't learn techniques and skills of public speaking. She just got better and better and better of being herself in front of an audience. And so it's interesting that one of the things I've, I've, I've found out I'm going to be a judge tonight. Uh, and uh, so it says, what, what's your, what, what qualifies you to be a judge? I was like, oh, well, I'm me. I'm, I, have a, I have a doctorate in being myself. And so I have, I've got, I'm really, really attuned to only one thing is the person I'm listening to being themselves. I'm really good at being able to tell that when someone's being themselves. So I really, really like that. Because, and here's why that's important. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. Like, you know, you know when it comes to, oh yeah, mobile phones <laughs> need to have really cool tunes so we can all get on down. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so here's the interesting thing. How many of you are uh, coaches or trainers or uh, do something like that? How many of you have to sell or influence as part of your job? How many of you are parents or have partners or friends? Or <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. When it, comes to, when it comes to public speaking, like when someone goes out of a talk going, that was the most amazing talk. The number one thing that decides whether, whether it's an amazing talk or not, whether they're going to buy your product after hanging out with you or not, whether they're going to go on another date with you or not, it's the experience they have. It's the feeling they have when they're with you. And you know what the number one thing that affects the feeling someone has when they're with you? It's the feeling that you have. They pick up on the feeling you're in. They pick up on where you're coming from. And the interesting thing is, the number one thing that, it, that affects the feeling of where you're coming from is how much you got on, my, on your mind. Not on my mind. You guys don't have anything on my mind. It's how much you got on your mind. And it's so interesting. So when I, used to, when I used to be terrified of public speaking, I would be fine till I got up in front of the group. And then all this stuff would start going through my head. I'd have, 
my head would fill up with all this stuff. And it filled up with so much stuff that my face blanched and my knees knocked and my throat dried up and I started croaking and stuff. And, and so I then went on a search to find out how can I do things to get better at public speaking when what I really needed was to find out what was putting all that stuff on my mind in the first place. And it turns out that it's just a misunderstanding, a mistaken belief about where your feelings are coming from. See, you're designed for mental clarity. You know, you know those days when uh, you're, you're hanging out with people and the conversation just flows? Or maybe you're on a date and you just feel totally connected with the person or hanging out with your friends and you just feel really connected with them. Or maybe even sometimes like I like going for walks in the woods and just kind of fall into that connection with nature and with life. And for some people it's, oh I really like it. Some people it's, it's when you're exercising or some people, it, like for me it's often these days, it's first thing in the morning. It used to be first thing in the morning I'd wake up and my head would instantly be buzzing with all the things that were going on that day. But now when I wake up in the morning, I got nothing on my mind. And it turns out that when you got nothing on your mind, that's when you come up with your best ideas. That's when you deliver your best performances. That's when you have the greatest impact on an audience, on an individual, in your own life. That's where the goodies are. They're already there inside you. They're not outside of you. They're inside you. So that's nice to know, isn't it? So I wanted to read you guys a quote because Anik and I were having an interesting conversation. I can't remember what it was, but it was interesting. <laughs> and, and, and I said, like, how many people in here, oh, this is, this is going to be kind of, how many of you have ever heard someone say, oh, I'd totally quit my job and do what I'd love to do if only I knew what it was? Who's, who's ever heard someone say that or, or has a friend who thinks they may say that? Uh, or, or who's heard someone say, oh, I'd quit my job and I'd do what, my lo what I love and I'd really give, give it all to life if only I knew how to do it? Who's heard that? If only I knew how to do it. Those are really easy answers to give. And they're a lot more plausible and sound kind of cooler than I'd, I'd go for it and do what I love and really go for it if I wasn't such a scaredy cat. <laughs> you see? The, and, and the reason I'm telling you that is because I've got this great quote from one of my favorite philosophers, uh, Curtis Jackson, who you may know as Fifty Cent, and uh, very, very interesting guy. Very, very successful. I talk about connecting with people and delivering messages. Very good at it. He said, "The greatest fear people have is that of being themselves. They want to be Fifty Cent or someone else. They do what everyone else does, even if it doesn't fit where and who they are. But you get nowhere that way." Your energy is weak and no one pays attention to you. You're running away from the one thing that you own, what makes you different. What makes you different is you. It's you. It's you. You already have it. You already are it. It's already there. And it's the thing people are most afraid of. So I just, just thought I'd mention it. Because it's interesting. At the beginning of my one-year program, I say, I say something to people. Because people, you understand, people 
uh, come to it and they, they want to be successful or they want to build their business or they want to be a better speaker or a better coach or whatever it might be. And I'll, I'll say to them, look, on the one hand, I really, really hope that you come out of this program wildly successful, whatever your definition of success is at the time, that by the time you get to the end of it, you're wildly successful. And on the other hand, what I most want for you is for you to become the fullest expression of who you really are. Because the path to your most inspiring success is through being who you really are. That's the source of your ability to impact groups. That's the source of your ability to love your life. That's the source of your ability to make a difference to others. That's the source of your ability of having a message worth listening to. It's through being yourself. And, and it's so interesting. You know, I think, I think it was Judy Garland said it, it's better to be a first-rate version of yourself rather than a second-rate version of someone else. You know, the, the so I'm going to do, do a drawing with two people, but it works the same with a group of people. Or maybe I'll go nuts and draw the whole group. I have a bunch of people. If you got a lot on your mind, people in your group, they'll pick up on it. And they won't feel connected to you. If you got a clear head, the people you're with are going to head in that direction too. And the connection opens up. And it turns out that the feeling of connection is like a conduit for your message to pass through. That's where impact comes from. And there's nothing you need to do to get a feeling of connection. It's what gets in the way. And th here's the cool thing. You know how your body, like if you get a cut or a scratch or something, it just heals automatically? Like you don't even have to figure it out. You don't really even have to think about it. In fact, most of the cuts and scratches and bruises you've had in your life, they healed without you even knowing you had them, right? Yes, no. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that. We know what you're talking about. Well, that's because your body has an incredible intelligence and wisdom in it. And what's less well known is that that same intelligence, that same wisdom, that same self-healing capacity is also resonant in your mind. You ever think of that? Like when it comes to, you know, healing a cut or digesting your lunch, you don't sit there thinking about it, going, oh, I gotta, I gotta put my energy into healing this cut or digesting my biscuits because, you know. No, you just, your body handles it, right? Yeah, no. What, what's this got to do with speaking? Well, it's the same with your mind. <coughs> Your mind is a self-clearing system. And the better you understand the nature of that self-clearing system, the more it's going to take stuff off your mind. And as it takes stuff off your mind, you're going to feel connection emerging. Because here's the thing. There's the fact of connection, and then there's the experience of connection. So the experience of connection is like, well, who's had that feel? Have you ever had that thing where you're out on a date with someone or maybe a business meeting or a sales meeting or something, and it's all, like, you can just feel the vibes there, and it, you're on it, and it's, you're in the moment, both of you, and then all of a sudden, one of you says something or one of you does something, and it's like someone sucked all the air out of the room, and the connection's gone. You ever had that? The connection hasn't gone. It's just your, exp your attention has filled up with thinking. It's filled up with thinking. And in any moment, you can fall out of that thinking and back into the present. Now, here's where it gets a bit unusual. 
the obvious question is to ask how. How do you do that? How do you, if, you're, if it's all going great and you're feeling connected and you're in the flow and then you lose the connection, how do you get back into it? It turns out that's the wrong question. The right question is, what's filling your head up in the first place? And what's filling your head up is a simple misunderstanding about where our experience is coming from. And for tonight's purposes, I'm going to call it the teddy bear factor. Oh, Anik, will you tell me when I got five minutes left? Oh, you will? Great. So you know how little babies, they often have teddy bears or ponies or... Uh, these are, I'm going to draw a bunch of them. They've, they've got a teddy bear or a pony or something that's there. Uh, that it, it's not a very good drawing. That, that's, just in case you're thinking, oh my God, he's the next Picasso. That's incredible. He's got some talent. It seems to the kid, right, like their feelings of comfort and well-being are coming from the teddy bear or the pony or the blanket or the rabbit or whatever. Right? You've seen this? It, seem, it really seems to the kid like that. But that's not really how it works, right? All those feelings are coming from the kid. The teddy bear or the pony or the rabbit or whatever, it's full of stuffing. It's got no sophisticated feeling emitter in it. No, it's full of stuffing. The kid is creating that experience of peace, that experience of comfort, that experience of well-being and security, it's all coming from the kid. They just think it's coming from the bear or the rabbit or the blanket. Right? This makes sense. Zero percent coming from there. Hundred percent coming from there. Right? Well, we get that, and if, you, and if you take the, if you go, I'm having that, and take it away, but in an English accent, obviously, they, the kid would get upset, and all their feelings of upset would be coming from them as well, but they'd think it was, had something to do with the pony, right? You get that, right? And we get that, but then we think it's different when it's the job, or the boss, or the partner, or the bank balance, or the audience, or the judges, or the future, or the past, or our bodies. We think, well, some of it must have something to do with my job must have something to do with what an asshole my boss is. must have something to do with my bank balance and my mortgage and my future and my age. And, uh, da, da. But no, it's a trick of the mind. It's a trick of the mind. And it's a trick of the mind that's so compelling and so befuddling that most of humanity has been in thrall for it for thousands of years. You open the papers any day and you see this is what's causing most of the problems in the world is the mistaken belief that our feelings are coming from out there. It can't possibly work that way. So this is what I saw back in 2009 after my abortive ski vacation. I, uh, I saw that I'd been living in an illusion about where my experience was coming from. And I had three insights. That was the first one. I saw, oh, it doesn't work that way. That was big for me. Really changed everything. Then the second one, second insight, you know that thing, who's, I, some of you I bet have done NLP, that thing that people have all the resources they need. You, you've heard of that? Well, one, one night, I'm hanging out with my mates, and I suddenly have this insight, oh, that's true. It's true, the fact that you can even see and hear or feel means that you have all the peace and joy and love and security and confidence within you that you're ever going to need, that you're ever going to feel, that you have within you all the wisdom you're ever going to require, all the answers to the questions you're ever going to need answers to. 
I went from it being a good idea to knowing it like I know my own name. And then the third insight I had was that, because I'd been learning about this stuff, and I thought, oh, that's an interesting belief system. And then I woke up one morning, I swear to God, I was like, oh, holy shit, this is the future of humanity. This is the future of psychology. This is principles for psychology. So I literally that day called up my business partner. I said, hey, Nikki, we're getting out of the NLP business. There's principles behind psychology. Game changer. So when I first got back to London, I started talking to people about it. Like, hey, there's principles. And they're like, <laughs> they're like you're crazy. <laughs> but I didn't shut up. And then interesting things started happening. People started coming and getting involved. I'd be, people had been telling me for over a decade, you should write a book. And it never felt right. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, I've got to write a book. Boom. Book comes out, goes to number one. All kinds of things are happening. So talking to people, future of humanity, that sort of thing. Beginning of this year, I wake up one morning, and I'm like, oh, we got to make a project. So the project is, like, I've got two daughters. They're 11 and 15. Well, 11 and 16, actually. One just had, had a birthday. And they're digital natives, just like most of the people in this room are uh, television natives. So you were born into a world where everyone already knew about televisions. They were born into a world where everyone already knew about the Internet. Well, <coughs> World Clarity Project is about psychological freedom for everyone, everyone on the planet, because... This understanding is to psychology what the discovery of germs was to medicine. Discovery of germs uh, and the role of germs in disease added 30 years to the average lifespan of everyone on the planet. And so all of us are germ natives. We are born into a world where everyone knows about germs. Well, 2030 is my, uh, my goal for the first gener generation of clarity natives being born into the world, children born into a world where the adults already know about this stuff. Because this misunderstanding is what's behind wars, it's behind uh, most relationship conflict, most psychological suffering, most crime, most unhappiness. And so I love the idea of a world where uh, people grow up knowing this already. So anyway. I think we have five minutes for questions, don't we? I, I don't remember what I agreed, but yeah. So that's, that's why I do what I do, and that's why I think it's vitally important for every single one of you to wake up to who you really are. Because the fact that you're here means that you have something to share with the world. And the more of you there is in that, like who you really are in that, the more powerful it's going to be. So thank you for your attention. Happy to take any questions. <laughs>